Do you wanna know how to update your entertainment stand, maybe some of your new furniture that you've gotten in the last, I don't know, five to 10 years? Stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to get an awesome Southwest colorful look on your furniture. Hey everybody, my name is Kristana. If you are new here, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell. You'll get all the latest videos that I put out. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. So this is a custom and I am going to be making it into a Southwest colorful boho themed piece. It's going to be a statement piece in my client's living room. So this is a fairly, it's not old. Okay. So we're going to have to fix this little, this guy right here. She got it used. It's not an awful shape, but it does need a little bit of help. So it's not super old. As you can tell, it's got some really cool little designs on here. We're going to make it Southwest, but you know, it's got uh, a holder for compact discs, which is not really a thing anymore. So it's not old. I guess we'll have to glue that. <laughs> It's not super old, but it's not brand new. And so I am going to make this a one of a kind piece for my client. If you guys wanna see how to get a Southwest layered, colorful, textured look, stay tuned. There was some damage to the top and I knew I wanted to change the color. This is a piece with veneer and you can refinish veneer, but you have to be very careful. So I am using my five inch Orbital by Surf Prep, and I am going to remove the factory finish on here so that I can restain it. Once I had sanded down the top, I brought the piece inside and I am starting to remove all of the pools on here. Now you're gonna notice that I keep all of the hinges on this piece and that is because it's going to be cohesive with the finish. So I always say I take all the hardware off unless it's gonna go with the finish and this is going to be part of the finish. And then I am going to clean it with my Dixie Bells White Lightning. So this acts as a deglosser as well. So you wanna make sure that your surface is really nice and clean. After I go over it with my Dixie Bell White Lightning, I take clean water and a clean rag and I take all the residual White Lightning off so that way I don't have any adhesion issues. This top, I wanna make sure I don't get any paint on it. So I'm gonna use my sticks tape and I am going to just tape around the top of the piece. So that way I can paint and not have to worry about not getting it on the top. I'm going for a Southwestern boho look. So I'm going to use Barn Red and Colonel Mustard. And you're gonna see that I'm gonna create a color in between. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create texture on this piece. I am gonna put some barn red in here and then I'm going to pour a little bit of my sea spray at a time. I want it to be about a brownie-like batter consistency. Now this is the part where you need to trust the process. And this finish does take quite a few products, but you can pick apart this video and you can choose what you wanna do. If you wanna learn how to do texture, then just do that part. There's gonna be a few other things I'm gonna teach you in this video. So I don't want you to feel like you have to do everything I show you in videos. I just like to show you guys a lot of things so that way you can take it for your next project, maybe one or two things from the video. So I'm taking a cheap chip brush after I have mixed my sea spray and my barn red, and I am going to create texture. So I'm going to stipple it on there. I'm going to go in long strokes. I'm gonna go every which way. There is no rhyme or reason because I wanna create as much texture as I can. I am going to put this in random areas. I'm not gonna cover the entire thing in barn red because you're gonna see next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom color with mixing the kernel mustard. So I'm gonna use the same exact mixing cup that I already used, and I'm gonna pour some of the kernel mustard in there, and then I'm gonna put some sea spray in, and it's gonna create kind of an orange-like hue. And then after that, after I'm done putting that on the piece, I'm going to add just the kernel mustard in that same mixing bowl, and I'm not gonna mix it with the red that's already in there. And that way I have three different colors from only two paint jars.
Once I'm done putting the third color on there, I am going to let this sit so that the sea spray texture can thoroughly dry before I put the top color onto over it. Okay, so keeping in the tradition of a Southwestern look, we are going to use mermaid tail. I'm only going to go halfway up this piece with the mermaid tail and then the top half I'm going to use pure ocean, which is another turquoise bluish color. So. I am not worried about getting complete full coverage on this and you'll see I just kind of dip it in there do thin layers I'm doing almost a little bit more than a dry brush but not quite full coverage with the paint because later on I'm gonna be sanding to bring all those other underneath colors all the warm colors out through there this is not a perfect finish I mean, to me it's perfect, but it's not meant to be a smooth finish. It's meant to be chippy, distressed, textured, colorful, just a lot of character. So this is the color I'm using as mermaid tail right now. I'm gonna go all the way around the piece on the bottom half with it. On the top half, I'm gonna go over it with pure ocean and I'm gonna use the same exact technique. I am gonna go down into the mermaid tail a little bit and then in a second, I'm gonna show you how to kind of blend them together a little bit. It's almost a dry brushing type blend, which is really great for colors that are super, super similar. So the top half of this is gonna be painted in pure ocean. Okay, remember, this is not an absolute perfect finish, but I do wanna blend these two colors together a little bit better. So after I do my coat of Pure Ocean, it's a little bit damp still, I'm going to take my mermaid tail back in there and I'm gonna do a little bit on the brush at a time and almost dry brush over that transition line. I'm gonna do circles, I'm gonna do horizontal, vertical, the same way that I teach you guys how to blend is how I'm gonna do this, but it's a very light hand, almost a dry brush, and these colors are very, very similar, so it's going to kind of make the transition not quite as hard and that way everything starts coming together and it becomes more cohesive.
Okay, remember that little metal part at the bottom that I didn't paint over? This is why. We are going to create some faux rust with rusty nail and coffee bean. So I did go over it with the red and the orange colors, but you see how little of paint I used right there? I'm going to take a cheap chip brush and I'm just going to dab and layer those two colors over that metal piece so that I can create a faux rust look. So you'll see me layering this. And in a second, what I did is I actually went and sanded the leg. So that way I could show you how to make it drippy. And I knew I needed to sand that back because I wanted to show those colors. So you're not crazy. It, I did go and sand after I put the first layer on and then I let that dry and I'm going to go back a second time and I'm going to start layering a little bit more. I'm going to take my water bottle, my, my mister bottle, and I am going to create a drippy look. So you see right here, the leg is now sanded. Yes, I did that. I will do that on the entire piece. But for this part, I wanted to make sure that I already had it sanded because you can see right here, I'm going to start creating drips. So I'm going to take the paint and I, I want the paint to be wet. So I'm going to dip my brush in the paint and I'm just going to go over the areas wh where I made it wet. So that way those colors drip down so that it has an aged drippy rust look because a lot of times when you see things rusting, there is kind of a dripping from the water that created the rust over time. You can take the tongue depressor and you can put a little bit of paint on it and you can dab it and then go over it. You can take the brush too and you can go over it with the water and that will also allow it to drip down even more. So play around with it because you don't want this to look perfect. You want this to look aged. I am going to sand the panels of the doors. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to do a silk screen stencil on it. So I want to smooth it out as much as I can. That way I know that the silk screen stencil will adhere to it. It's not going to, it's, it'll be fine over texture. I just want to smooth it out as much as I can. And I also want to bring out all those colors underneath before I put the stencil over top of it. I'm gonna use the silk screen stencil and it's called Western Boho, okay? So you peel it from the backing and then you're going to place it on your piece. You're going to rub it down with your hand to make sure that it is adhered. Now, again, this is not a perfect finish. I don't need this stencil to be super perfect. I actually want it to look distressed. So these stencils are really, really great to give you a nice crisp, stencil, but I'm not using it like that in this, this sense. So I'm taking sawmill gravy and I'm taking one of the premium chip brushes and I'm pushing it in all those areas that look white, or you could see the paint through that's a mesh screen. And so you're going to push the paint through there and it's going to give you a very clean, crisp stencil, but you're going to see, I'm going to use my hands on this and I do things a little bit differently. Always. I'm always breaking the boundaries, but I wanted this in the panels because I felt like it was missing something. So I'm using sawmill gravy for this right now and I'm just pushing it through. You can reuse these stencils 10 to 12 times. I'm not gonna wash it in between each use. I'm going to do the entire panel. Then I went and washed it and then I did the other panel. So you can see right here, I'm just pushing it through. There is a tool that comes with it and you can use a scraper if you want. But again, I don't need it to be completely perfect. And so that's why I was okay with just pushing it through with a premium chip brush. Once you've covered the entire stencil, you can pull it back and that it stays sticky. So it looks really great. Again, I don't want it to be super perfect. Now, if this wasn't on a textured surface or something like that, it probably would be even more, but I'm just pushing it down with my hands and I'm lining it up and I'm doing the same exact process on the entire thing. And you'll see a couple times I take my finger and I rub across the stencil and that's me just taking the pre-existing paint that was already on the stencil and I'm just kind of pushing it through so that I can make, so like you'll see 
with this one right here, I'm going to put the paint on here all the way and then I pull it off and then I realize that there's a little bit of a line, which is not a big deal because I'm gonna be distressing it, but you can see right here, I reline it up and I just take my finger and push it through and then it adds a little bit more of that stencil on there. So you can do that as well <laughs> if you want. I, like I said, I used my hand. You don't have to use your hand, but if you do take some paint and rub it through, it will go onto your piece. So right there, I did my finger and I pushed it in. Now I'm going through with my three by four electric ray and a fine 10 millimeter pad, and I am going to distress over top of it. And so if you see over to the right, there's kind of a gap, a little line. I didn't worry about that because I'm gonna take my sander and I'm gonna distress some parts. So then everything flows really, really nicely. After you're done distressing, sometimes it looks like it has muddied together. It hasn't, that's just dust. Take a paper towel and wipe it off and you'll see that you just get all that dust off and then it looks fine. One thing I wanna note when you're doing the distressing on the stencil or right now what I'm doing, you need to make sure that your stencil is dry then you go and distress it. And then you also need to make sure that your pure ocean and your mermaid tail are dry. Of course, if you're using different colors, just make sure that your paint is dry before you go and distress it. Now, if you're using a wet distressing technique to do this, then it doesn't matter so much if it's completely dry, but if you are sanding with a sander or sanding by hand, you need to make sure that that paint is dry. Otherwise it's gonna pull your paint off or if you don't wait for your stencil to be completely dry, then it will get muddied. So as long as you make sure that your stencil is completely dry too, then it'll be fine. Remember I told you to trust the process. So at this point, this is where all those first colors that we put on this piece are going to shine through. When you're distressing, especially when you're using a texture additive, you put the colors over top of that base coat of those colors. And then later on you distress and it brings everything out and makes it look awesome. So that is what I'm doing right now is I am sanding the entire piece down. I am going to create some colored wax. So I'm gonna put some of Dixie Belle's clear best dang wax and I'm gonna mix just a little bit of Florida orange. Again, remember I said, you don't have to do everything I do in these videos, but I'm just teaching you. So maybe on a project down the road, you wanna do some colored wax. This is how you do it. So I mix it really, really well into each other. I'm gonna take a cheap chip brush and I am going to accent this piece with the Florida orange because I did want a little bit more orange on this piece. And so I'm just going to put it in the cracks and crevices and then you can either leave it like that and let it dry or you can wipe it back a little bit so that it's not so dark. And then I allow this to dry for about 24 to 48 hours and then I'm going to go through and I'm gonna seal everything with gator hide. I'm gonna seal the body with gator hide. That way that colored wax is locked in. You can do this because that wax is water-based and so is the top coat. So you can see right here, I'm gonna put a little bit more colored wax in the cracks and crevices. And that's just going to, I feel like, bring everything together on the piece. Okay, I lied, the orange wax is not what brought everything together. We need to stain the top. So I'm using the Tobacco Road, the Voodoo Gel Stain and Tobacco Road. It's water-based. So you can see right here, this is just water. I am taking my mister bottle and I'm spritzing the surface with water. And then I'm going to lay down some of my stain. This helps that stain move a little bit better and then I don't have to use as much. Plus this wood is very raw and it's very dry. And so it helps it to not soak in quite as much if I just, put the stain on there. So it helps my stain go a little bit further. So I do this on the entire piece and then I'm going to do long strokes, go with the grain and that way everything looks nice. Then I wait 24 hours and I'm going to use gator hide on the top. So I'm 
putting aluminum foil as a liner in this so that I can reuse it so that my it doesn't get gator hide stuck in there. So I'm going to pour some gator hide in here. I'm using a high density foam roller for the top of this. And I am going to go with the grain and I'm going to do a layer of it, allow it to dry. You can sand with a 220 or higher, just very lightly in between coats. Make sure you get all the dust off and you can do the same exact thing. A lot of people are concerned about air bubbles when you're using a foam roller, but don't use a ton of pressure. And the first layer is always a liar. So let your first layer dry and then go over it one more time and it's gonna smooth everything out and it's gonna look really nice. Truthfully, this is my favorite way to do large flat areas because it just gives it a nice smooth finish and I don't spray. I do have a sprayer, but I don't have a setup. And so a high density foam roller is a really good choice or option for you if you don't spray or if you don't have an area to spray. While I'm letting the top dry, I'm going to take one of my synthetic brushes and I'm going to go over the body with gator hide. And this just gives it extra protection and it's gonna lock in and protect that orange wax that I did. And this is just gonna finish up the entire piece. All right, everybody, so this piece is done. I hope you enjoyed that video. This is for someone who loves texture, color, the Southwest boho, Western boho kind of look. I mean, I am not even from the Southwest or the West, and I love this look. So if you are not subscribed, make sure you are subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get all the latest notifications. Remember, everything I use on this piece will be in the description below. If you stay on, I did a little video around and I always take stage pictures. So remember that too in my videos, there's always that. If you wanna see still pictures, you can check out it on my Facebook or my Instagram channel as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is a good way to end my week. Lots of color, texture, and happiness. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Have an awesome, awesome week and happy creating. Bye-bye. I've been feeling this way for far too long